This time on Industrial Maker, I'm going to show you how to make this battery-powered portable LED lamp that can transform into all kinds of configurations. I had some curly maple boards left over from my dresser build and unfortunately when the seasons changed last year, they just warped badly. But the grain was so beautiful on these boards that I just couldn't throw them out. I think we've all been there. And since this lamp is made up of fairly small pieces, which would be less affected by the warping, I figured I would try to make use of those warped boards for this project. Before we start assembly, let's take a look at the design of this light. It's fairly simple, just three pieces. A base, a light bar, and a clever multi-support block. This support block has magnets that allow for it to attach to the base in different ways so it can support a desk light and a task light configuration and so it can be hidden away inside the base when the light is being used as a hanging light or a sconce. The base is about as simple as you can get just a box with an open back. The glue-up went as usual and as smoothly as glue-ups go. There really wasn't much to it. I intentionally cut the top of the box bigger than it needed to be so that I could come back after the glue up and use a flush trim router bit to cut down the top and make it perfectly even with the sides of the base. After flushing it up, I took the box to the router table and used a round over bit on the top and bottom edges just to give it a touch of mid-century modern style. I used a Forstner bit to drill holes where I could recess two rare earth magnets. The magnets I used were really strong for their size and they had countersunk holes which made it really easy to attach them with screws so they're flush with the surface of the base. I'm going to go into some more detail on how the magnets allow this lamp to transform later on. The next step is making the light bar. The main body is a piece of maple with an epoxy inlaid diffuser. And its removable back panel will have an aluminum channel to hold the LED strip. I cut the channel for the LEDs on my router table, only going about half inch deep. Then I mixed up some Total Boat 2 to 1 epoxy resin. I added some white pigment to the epoxy. This will diffuse the LEDs so they look like a long continuous light source instead of a bunch of separate dots of light. I came back with a clear epoxy layer on top. I personally love how the clear layer over the white gives a look of backpainted glass. Having the clear layer also lets more light through as compared to filling the whole channel with white epoxy so the light is brighter overall. Once the epoxy cured, I took the light bar back to the router table so I could route out a cavity in the back for the LEDs. I went slowly making multiple passes so that I could remove all the wood behind the epoxy but not remove too much of the epoxy itself. I 
use some Total Boat Fixo fast setting epoxy to attach an aluminum channel to the back panel. You could also just use an aluminum bar, but these aluminum channels are pretty darn cheap. I'll add a link to what I used in the description below. Before going further, I'm gonna take a second and enjoy one of life's simple pleasures, coffee. More specifically, Trade Coffee, the sponsor of today's video. When I think about things that are constant day in and day out of my life beyond just eating and sleeping well, there's coffee, seriously. It's one of the few things that I get to enjoy every single day of my life. For me, the aroma of coffee is synonymous with the start of a good day, regardless of what the rest of the day brings. Trade makes it easy to discover and enjoy great coffee, whether you're a complete coffee newbie, a barista, or somewhere in the middle like me. You can take their easy online quiz and Trade will recommend and send you delicious roasted order coffee from one of Trade's 50 award-winning roasters. Plus, all of Trade's coffee is ethically sourced through a supply chain that ensures that the money reaches the actual farmers so you can feel good about ordering from Trade. Right now, Trade is giving the first 100 people who click the link in the description below 50% off their first coffee. Just click the link and use the code MEDUSTRIAL. Much love to Trade for supporting this channel. And now, back to the build. The last step for the light bar is to add the washers. The washers are what align with the magnets in the base and allow it to be attached to the base and the support block in different configurations. There are two washers in the middle of the light bar which align with the two magnets in the middle of the base. They attach the bar to the base in a sconce or wall light configuration. Another washer at the end of the light bar will attach to the hideaway support block in the back. It can hold the light bar in a desk lamp configuration or sideways in a task light configuration. And when the support block isn't in use, it attaches magnetically to the inside of the base so it is out of the way but doesn't get lost. So at first I thought I'd make the support block out of wood and just used a scrap piece of the same maple to make this little prototype and get the placement of the washers and magnets correct. But then I started thinking about it and I realized this would be a cool opportunity to practice 3D modeling and use my 3D printer. With 3D modeling, it was really easy to get the cavities for the magnets and washers in the correct size and in the correct location. I was also able to add in a cord retention slot that can be used to hold the wire to the lights. So I printed up a couple of these, then I used auto body filler and sanded it down to get rid of the print lines as much as possible before spray painting them a couple colors. And I went with a white and an orange because I couldn't make up my mind. Let me know in the comments what you like the best, the white or the orange, or if you would have done something different. Color is always fun to play with. Just a couple more features to add to the base. First, I'm going to add some French cleats that allow it to be hung in both a vertical or horizontal orientation on a wall. Second, I'm going to chisel out a slot where we'll put the USB jack that's used for charging the battery. I'm going to sand and finish all the wood parts before I install the electronics because it avoids any risk of the finish getting into the electronics and mucking things up. Now on to the electronics. I used a simple chip that includes a micro USB jack and charges an 18650 Lion battery. The only other part that's needed for this is an LED controller. For these, I tried a new controller that allows me to control the LEDs via a Bluetooth app from my phone.
So if you guys enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you slam that sub button and thump the thumbs up button, because I think this is a really fun, creative community, and I think you'll enjoy it here, and I'd love to have you along. So I'm guessing some people are gonna be wondering how strong the magnets are. You can see here, I'm holding it by the light bar, which means it's holding up the heavier base. The base is what really needs to hold the light bar, though, especially when you hang it on the wall, and it does that without any issue whatsoever. So this light, um, you know, when I first made it, I actually wasn't really sure how useful it was actually gonna be. But now that I have it, I'm actually finding it to be a lot more useful than I thought. So I just made a new video editing area in my house. So it's a pretty dimly lit space and I had put a couple of cleats on the wall and now I can hang these lights to brighten up the place a little bit and I can take them off the wall and use them as a task light if I'm sketching or something like that where I need a little more focus light on my desk. I can also see myself using them as mood lights, taking them outside of my deck in the summer, um, maybe even using the party mode when we're getting kind of crazy with a bunch of makers sometime up there. I thought this was a fun build. I hope you enjoyed it. Much love. That's it for this time, and I'll see you next time.